Hey everybody, Charles for HumbleMechanic.com back to talk about more failed Volkswagen parts. Today we're going to be talking about serpentine belt tensioners. So we are back talking about more failed parts. Like I said, this is actually the 22nd video that I've done about failing Volkswagen parts. And I get a bunch of comments and emails about how People are thinking that Volkswagens are really bad cars because I do these videos, but anybody could be doing these videos about any car manufacturer. So this is just my take. I live in the Volkswagen world. I'm a Volkswagen tech, so I'm gonna do it about Volkswagen parts. All right, before we get into the show, let's talk about the sponsor of the day, which is Deutsch Auto Parts. These guys are the Volkswagen Audi parts experts. Awesome service, great pricing, ton of cool DIY videos, and I'll be hanging out with them at their booth at SoO. So, if you are going to SoO in Helen, Georgia, please swing by and say what up. All right, so we're talking about serpentine belt tensioners. Well, what the heck is a serpentine belt tensioner? Well, like a lot of automotive parts, it tells you exactly what it is in the name. It is a tensioner to keep the serpentine belt tight. So I guess a better question is, is what the heck is a serpentine belt? Well, the serpentine belt drives accessories on your vehicle's engine. So it's gonna drive, potentially, the power steering pump the AC compressor, the alternator, and maybe even the water pump like on my VR6. In addition to those accessories, you may also have multiple tensioners or multiple rollers in order to keep the belt lined up properly. Your serpentine belt is gonna be driven by the crankshaft either directly or indirectly. A lot of cars, it's driven right off the pulley on the end of the crankshaft. Some cars like the 2.5 liter Volkswagen engines, it's actually driven off the AC compressor but the AC compressor is driven by the crankshaft, so it all essentially is driven by the crankshaft. Now, to be fair, not all vehicles have all these accessories driven by a serpentine belt. Some have them driven by a ribbed belt, and some don't even have them at all. I have an engine sitting on a stand right behind the camera that doesn't have a serpentine belt at all. How does this maintain tension on the belt? Inside of this housing is a spring, and when you tension the belt, you're actually pulling tension back on the spring and letting it relax forward. What that does is that pushes the pulley here onto the serpentine belt, all while maintaining spring pressure on it. And actually, this one's probably a better example because as you can see, this one is smoked. So how do the tensioners generally fail? Well, they can fail in a few different ways. You can be looking at a weak spring. If you look really close here, you can see the spring inside of this tensioner. So that spring can definitely get weak. You could also have physical damage where the body of the tensioner comes apart. You could also have complete catastrophic failure like this one here, but generally you find that your tensioner fails and just causes a noise. It can be a really bad noise, something like this. But I'll be honest, this one takes a while to get that bad. It can be something as a simple squeak on startup or shut off. It may get worse when you turn on certain components. It may get louder when you turn the air conditioning on or when you turn the steering wheel all the way to one side or the other, really loading up certain components. Pretty much any load change on the serpentine belt circuit, be it the alternator, power steering pump, AC compressor, water pump, can cause the tensioner to make noise. What gets really interesting is diagnosing these problems. If it's catastrophic failure like this one, a simple visual inspection is the best way to tell. This one actually, the belt came completely off the car. You can remove the serpentine belt altogether and give the pulley a spin and see what it sounds like. Also rocking it back and forth like this may give you an indication that you have a failing tensioner, but a lot of them actually do have some side-to-side -side play in them brand new from the factory, so you do have to be careful jumping the gun on replacing one of these for a little bit of side-to-side -side play. If we're concerned about bearing failure, spraying a little bit of lubricant behind the pulley inside where the bearing pack is may or may not help you. Sometimes it's really obvious. Other times, not so much. You may also have another failing component, say the alternator pulley, which makes it sound like you have a bad tensioner, but it's actually the alternator pulley. So if you're gonna take the serpentine belt off to check for pulley noise, go ahead and check all of the pulleys that you can. As far as time to failure, it really all depends. Obviously, the older and the higher mileage that the vehicle is, the more prone to failure this component's gonna be. A lot of times they will start making noise before they reach critical mass like this one, so it's something you wanna definitely keep an ear open for. I think this one's off a V8 Torag. And this one looks like it's off a 2.5 liter. So I know the big question on most of your minds, is this a DIY or not? Well, probably. A lot of these either have one or three bolts holding them on. The 2.5 liters are a little bit tricky, especially compared to like the V8 Torag, which is a fairly easy one. 
The V6 Passats are fairly easy. Most of the VR6s aren't too bad. I would say all of the two liter engines are pretty easy. It really all depends on which engine you have and how much stuff is on the serpentine belt circuit. If you're gonna replace the tensioner, I also recommend go ahead and put a new serpentine belt on the car. Good piece of insurance so that you don't put a new tensioner with a weak belt, causing a little bit more stress on the belt. Also, a recommendation when replacing a serpentine belt, when you have your flashlight and you shine your flashlight down to make sure that you have the belt on, shine the light on each roller and each pulley to make sure that it's on on each one. I've seen guys put them on and it's on on the top, not on the bottom one, and you'll rip a serpentine belt apart. Or I've seen it actually pull serpentine belt guts inside the timing cover and cause timing belt issues. So take your time doing serpentine belts and make sure you get them on right on each roller. And it may come as a big surprise, probably not, but a lot of Volkswagen serpentine belts can be kind of tricky to get on. So again, take your time and be careful. All right guys, I'm gonna wrap it up there. If you have any questions or comments, post it in the comments section below. Hey, if you like the video, throw it a thumbs up on YouTube. You can also subscribe on YouTube or on the blog at humblemechanic.com. You can follow me on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and the blog, HumbleMechanic.com, and obviously on YouTube. All right, guys, thanks for watching, and I will see you next time. And hey, if you're going to SoO, swing by the Deutsch Auto Parts booth and say hi. Or if you see me roaming around with probably a camera in my hand, make sure uh, make sure you stop me and say hey. I got dirty for this video. I don't like that.